Hi everyone, Nova here again from Brighter Outlook Counselling Service. Thank you for joining me once again for this week's live streaming narcissistic abuse recovery question and answer session. We've got David DeMars joining us here again tonight. So I'm just waiting for him to pop up on the screen and I'll let him in. As usual, he's joining us um, at very awful hours, I think two o'clock in the morning, all the way from uh, Las Vegas. So I'm um, just waiting for, for David to pop um, up on my screen and I will let him in as soon as I see him. Okay, my name's Nova. For those of you who are joining us here for the first time, I'm a counsellor on the north side of Brisbane. My job is and my passion is to speak and counsel victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse. That's what I do every day. I work with people all over the world. So if you would like to have a Skype session with me or a one-on-one face-to-face, -on -one -face, if you could make it here to Brisbane, I would love, dearly love to be able to help you in your journey towards overcoming the trauma of narcissistic abuse. Okay, sometimes it takes a, a little while for the for the comments to load up um, in these live streams. Um, we've had a bit of trouble lately, so hopefully, fingers crossed, tonight will be trouble free. I hope so anyway. Okay, um, as usual guys, I'm going to ask very, very kindly if you can please like and share this live stream. Um, we're trying to raise awareness every week. We do this, we're trying to not only be of support to you uh, and, and everyone else out there who's, who's suffered um, the trauma of narcissistic abuse. Um, we want to get the message out there and we can only do that with, um, I guess, publicity getting it out there and what a wonderful tool is social media what a better tool could you have to do that and here is David so I'll just let him in uh, add David oh there we go and add hopefully David will be thanks for joining us and David should be here any second I'm having David here hi David how are you going I know that how are you I'm very well, thank you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Yep, I can hear you just fine too. Awesome. Good. Wonderful. Um, okay, so we've got we've only got one person here so far, so I'm sure um, others will will follow. We've got um, I don't know if you can see we've got Jada Wall here. Jada, welcome. I don't know if you've been here before, but thank you for joining us. And um, please uh, say where you're from too, guys. Um, as usual, say say whereabouts in the, the world you're from. We've got Jackie Peterson here. Um, Jackie says hi as well. Um, yeah, just say where you're from. And um, as usual, comment your questions uh, below. And David and I will do our absolute best uh, to answer them tonight. We've got Ian Palmer here. Hi, Ian. Um, and if we do, uh, and Jess Megan, now they're all coming in. We've got Jess. Hi, Jess. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, if we don't get around to answering them, guys, um, we we will do our best and we will try and answer them later on. So if you if you don't get around to asking a question during the live stream, just that this uh, this uh, broadcast will be on Brighter Outlook and um, Demar's Coaching. David's from Demar's Coaching, um, and he will have it on his timeline as well. So it will be there. Just put your comments down, and hopefully we will answer as many as we can. Okay, David, did you want to uh, tell everyone about the topic that we chose uh, to talk about tonight, something that really interests me and I know we, we get asked about a lot? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do. I'm sure you do too. Uh, yeah. Reactive abuse, reactive abuse, and that's when the victim becomes the abuser. Pretty, put it in simple terms. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I mean, I... I wanted to talk about this because I know so many victims feel like they're they're the abuser. I mean, especially when we learn that uh, one of us is the narcissist, because that's kind of what it seems like. We discover, we look for an answer, we find out our ex or somebody in our life is a narcissist, and then the doubt comes, and then, you know, am I the narcissist? And this is just one reason why you guys may be feeling this way. Because yeah. the abuse that you endured has made you a reactionary person where we react and react and react to everything in our environment and people around us. Yeah. And the thing is, it's, it, it's what they want, isn't it? It's, um, 
it's, you know, they dig and they provoke and they always seem to remain very calm and cool. And, um, you know, that what they're after is for your reaction. And, of course, you know, you've been ground down and, and, and you're probably frustrated through all that gaslighting and stuff that you've experienced. And what do you do as a normal person? You might snap. You might, you know, not even go that far. Just react, you know, raise your voice and go to defend yourself. And, of course, then they've got you, you know. They've, they've uh-huh. got you. You reacted to their abuse. So it's there's the proof. You, I told you you were crazy. I told you you were the abusive one and you're calling me abusive and they, you know, they do that whole um, that whole Davo thing, the um, defend, um, attack and reverse victim and offender and you become the abuser. Yeah, yeah the switch so through. I mean, I, I think the smear campaign is a good example, right? The relationship yeah. ends, they're trashing you over here and you can only take so much a day, a week, a month, six months, a year, and then you finally react and they, they turn around and say, look, look, crazy one over here. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. This, um, guys, this is, the, when you react to this abuse, you, what you're doing is normal. You know, you're, you're human. You're responding. Um, you're giving a conditioned response to, um, to, a certain behavior and that certain behavior is designed to elicit the response that you're giving so you're giving the narcissist what they want so they can flip that script around and and the thing is you can you can like you said david they can they can go for ages and and just you know take it and take it but one day as a normal human being you can only take so much and yeah you snap and that's when they pounce yeah right right yeah, all eyes yeah. on you. Uh huh. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, <clears throat> sorry, Dave. It's, it's a hard thing to explain to somebody uh, what you you because you can't say that that what you did was okay. You That's know, what, right. What, so abuse is probably not a good word, is it? Really, reactive abuse is probably not a really good. Like the word abuse is not really a good word. No. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's wrong behavior, but it's hard to distinguish who is the abuser. And yeah. It makes it very hard. I think, yeah. yeah, and that's why, um, you know, as we know, people come out of this thinking, you know, asking, am I the narcissist? You know, I started doing what what they said I was doing. You know, am I the crazy one? And and no, you're just reacting to um, to provocation and, you know, digging and, and getting that, that boot in so so that you do, you know, overreact, as they say, or, or you know, um, become, in their eyes, a drama queen. And it's just it's just a big, big setup, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I mean, ultimate gaslighting, right? Yeah. Cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really sets yeah. you up and- to just too much doubt in your head. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I guess one thing to remember, guys, is um, the difference between you and your abuser is your reaction to your actions, which means that you experience remorse, don't they? Like we feel, oh, gosh, you know, I can't believe I acted that way and I feel really bad now and, you know, I need to make it up to them. And we have those kinds of reactions, whereas the narcissist or, you know, the borderline or the, you know, the the whatever the cost to be personality is, they will have no remorse, you know, that there's nothing to be sorry for and you deserved, um, you know, whatever they called you, you reacted. There's the proof. Yeah, right. I mean, this causes uh, shameful behaviour, doesn't it? And that that really makes a big difference. You're right. The fact that we have remorse and feel guilty, feel ashamed of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even when you haven't done something, um, I, I was reading a bit about it um, today, David. Um, I, I can't remember the author, but he called it, he named it the dog whistle. And uh, I just thought it was really interesting. And what he said was, um, and guys, let me know, if, let, let David and I know if, if you've experienced this. I'm sure many of you had. But I don't know, just say you're in a room with a lot of people. Maybe you're out to dinner with someone. You know, you have to kind of, you know, have your um, be on your best behavior and everyone's having a wonderful time 
and the abuser, the narcissist, will say something that only you get. Like no, no one else gets it. You know, their, their lies, the dog whistle, you know, only you hear it. Um, so they might say, I don't know, an example might be, you know, they might be talking about cooking and, and people being wonderful cooks. And meanwhile, your abuser's been telling you, uh, you know, you suck, you know, you're a terrible cook, you burnt every meal this week. And they might say something like, oh, you know, um, she, my wife, she's a, an amazing cook, aren't you, dear? You know, and there's that little dig, there's that little jibe that no one else gets but you and you of course, you know, well, maybe you, you'll react to that, maybe you won't, but the, the chances are that you, you will react and that's exactly why the narcissist did it. It's that, that thing that only you will, will understand so that you look like the crazy one to everyone else. Sure. Yeah, I love that term, dog whistling. It's, you know, yeah. for those who don't know, the dog whistle is a, only a sound that the dogs can hear. You blow it, no one can hear it. So it's only something directed, only you can tell. And I just made a video uh, titled anger how it's a tool of the narcissist to control and and it's same thing i mean everybody knows this man in a party social gathering there's people there and they just give you the look you know just the look like you better be quiet you better say oh, i'm talking about you i'm thinking yeah. about you you're gonna get it later you know stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely and, and you, yeah. you get enough of that in a social setting say one hour and then you start freaking out you're like i can't take this anymore and people are like what, what's wrong with you yeah yeah, and and throw in, you know, you might be, you know, in the social context like that at a party or a dinner party, you know, there's probably alcohol flowing and you've had a couple of glasses of wine or something and the narcissist yeah, is so nice. manipulative, they will actually wait, you know, till they know that, you know, you're at a stage where you will react even more. Um, and right. this is you know, it just it's all a, a big setup so to make you look even crazier and also mm -hmm. it kind of paves the way doesn't it David for the smear campaign because mm -hmm. uh, you know people saw it you know yeah, they like, see the truth yeah you know what I'm talking about every time I brought her around she causes problems yeah she freaks out yeah 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 uh. Gosh, so frustrating. Yeah, Jen, go, Jen Claxton said yes <laughs> with 10 yeses and, and a big hand clap. So obviously um, you've experienced that, Jen. Um, okay, um, we'll see if we've got some questions here, uh, David. Now, once again, I've got a small uh, screen. Jen says, once your eyes are open to how they played you like that, your mind is blown. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, Jen. You, you don't know this. You don't know what you don't know. So you don't know that this is you're being manipulated into, you know, giving them a reaction, which is exactly what they want. Of course, they're all calm and co cool and collected and they're simply the puppeteer, you know, and you're the puppet providing them with exactly what they want. Yeah. So once your eyes are open, yeah, you start to become, um, I guess, a little more aware. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. That's the reaction. That's, you know, how aware – how aware can you be before it's just you're just so reactionary all the time? And that's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's right. You know, it, you, you can't. You it's the more this happens to you, um, it it just becomes a knee jerk reaction, doesn't it? It's like, um, yeah. you know, there, there's the the dig, and here's my reaction. You know, it's just, you don't even think after a while because you've been taught. You know, slowly yeah. but slow, but surely you've been taught to do that. Yeah, it doesn't matter I mean, if you're walking on eggshells, if you're just always waiting for them to come home, you know, you're always waiting for the fight, always waiting for the the dig, the the criticism, just always reacting. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives it gives them the opportunity to say, see, I, I told you, you're an absolute drama queen, you overreact, but the but they're doing this all the time it, intentionally, you know, that they know. They know what they're doing and they know that they're going to get, get a reaction and that's exactly why they do it. And then, you know, because you are a normal person, you start to feel bad because, you know, you might have yelled or, you know, um, I don't know, maybe you, you, I don't know, just screamed at them and, and reacted badly. Uh, and then you feel remorse and you feel shame and then you go to apologise, um, you know, to the, to the abuser and that puts them in a position of power. So it's just about power and control yeah totally i mean that, that's a verbally abusive is the is the number one really i mean we we go from never calling anyone a bad name 
to just completely verbally assaulting the other person, don't we? And we feel bad. Um, and it can be threats, threats of security. I'm leaving all the time, right? We could go from being a trusting person to not trusting anybody. We could go yeah. from, you know, we've never hit anyone to now we're physically fighting with another person, pushing, shoving, yeah. hitting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that That's a big one, David. Um, I... I spoke to one of my um, lovely clients a couple of weeks ago, and um, yeah, he he had you know uh, um, some an extremely emotionally uh, manipulative and abusive um, partner, and um, she used to provoke him by going, "Come on, hit me! Come on, I know you want to hit me right here! Come on!" And but a long, long time he he didn't react, and she would just do it every single time. Come on pull her hair back, hit me, hit me. And then, you know, one day I, I think he, he just pushed her out the way and she went, parent, sorry, he went, um, sorry, he pushed her out the way and she went sailing back, um, you know, completely over-dramatising the situation and then, you know, called the police, caught, you know, got a restraining order against him. And right. it was just all oh, provoked man. and manipulated. That is so common. I mean, there's the story of the sociopath right there. There's a sociopathic relationship completely. I mean, yeah. I mean, imagine, and, and then now he is, this guy would be so careful and scared and cautionary. So from that point on, it's even more reactionary, more reactionary. Oh, absolutely. He, he He's, um, you know, he, he's scared to go out outside he's scared to to do so many things he's traumatized because he thinks that well you know now that there's like a restraining order in in place that um any you know any little thing will be used against him and potentially will destroy his life i mean it, it's like mud you know it, it sticks to you all of that stuff sure yeah it does yeah yeah up here at least yeah and um okay Right, we'll see if we've got a few questions here. Um, okay, we've got Sonia Hume here from Envelope Victoria and Aussie. Hi, Sonia. We've got Angela Brooks. Hi, Angela. Katie Perrin from Sydney, Australia. Ian Palmer from Brookfield, Brisbane. Renee Glenn from Cronulla. Um, doesn't look like we've got too many um, of the US people here yet. They normally join in a bit later on. Yeah, it's pretty, okay. pretty early in the morning. It's good when I yeah, yeah, when they've stayed up that late, it's amazing. Okay, we've got Julia. Hi, Julia from Fiji. Wow. Okay, Jess Megan's here, Ian, Jackie, Jada Wall. Okay. Um, gosh, such a small screen. Sonia says, yeah, it was degrading. Yeah, it is degrading, Sonia. It's, um, it's absolutely mentally exhausting. Okay. Um, Jen says, and now it's exhausting trying to remain aware if having to interact with him due to our, our children. Yeah. Well, you know, hopefully you'll be, you'll, you'll know when he's provoking you now, now Jen, and just don't, don't give him what he wants. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Raymond's watching. Hi, Ray Raymond. Uh, Sonia says, I always reacted, yes, I was called a drama queen and did feel bad. All you are saying is right now is so familiar to me. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's pretty textbooked, um, Sonia. It just puts them in a position of power and it gets to prove their point that you're the crazy one and you're the, you're the abuser and it sets them up for a beautiful you know, maybe you're going to court or something like that. And if people have seen you react in this, you know, um, reactive fashion that, you know, probably was, wasn't was your best behaviour, that will all get used against you. And that's that's exactly what it's intended to do. How about if there's, how about when children are there and, and they pro provoke a fight in front of the children? You know, it, yeah. they push and poke you every day until finally you explode and yell in front of the child. Don't then they say, "Don't yell in front of the child. Look what you're doing." Or you break something or something like that and make the child cry. Now look what you're yeah. doing. That'll come up. That'll come up in children's court. 
family court, I mean. And, yeah, really good point, David. And it's also, that, that's also kind of like the dog whistle, isn't it? Because the kids aren't seeing, um, you know, the abuser, let's say it, mm -hmm. let's say it's dad, the, the abuser, they're not seeing them, you know, do anything overtly wrong, but they're so sure are seeing mum go crazy. Conversation. Yeah, sounds like a calm conversation for a half an hour, an hour, yeah. until one explodes, yeah. Yeah, so the kids the kids are being gaslighted here. You know, they're, they're being manipulated. They're seeing dad as the, you know, the, the cool, calm, collected one, and mum's gone crazy again. But what they're not seeing, and, and of course they don't understand it, is, you know, what's behind all that. And, yeah, it's, it's just abuse. It's child abuse. Or, 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 or they're devaluing you in front of the children. How much can you take of that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Be before you react. Um, sure. Yeah, not not good, um, Jen. But, yeah, now that you're aware, I guess just try and and, and not react to his provocation, um, certainly not when the kids are there. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else have we got? Um Jen says, I never reacted physically, only ever tried reasoning with him. Yeah, and it, it doesn't work, does it, Jen? Um, I never, uh, I only ever tried reasoning with him and trying to stand up for my basic human rights. Now have learned what learned there was and is zero point in that. Yeah. Um, David, we all know what the narcissist thinks of our human rights, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, nothing yeah. applies, you know, to them, at least. Yeah, only to them. Um, they, they're not interested in anything you anything logical or, you know, um, any solution-focused conversation. They, they never were. They were just after you getting you to dance and react to them. So you trying to stand up for your human rights, you're just giving them ammunition because they don't care. They just want to see you go crazy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. I mean, this is this is all victim, victims like narcissists and stuff. It's all about the blame game. It's always blaming, blaming. Whose fault is it? Right. So that's all they do. Is they try. They have to make it your fault. Yeah. They um. They they, they love the drama. You know, as we know, a narcissist um can't exist without drama, and they will be the first one. I'm sure many of you have heard this before. They'll be the first one to say they hate drama. They hate drama. Why do you have to be so dramatic all the time? But they're instigating it, you know, subtly. They're the ones who instigate the drama and then, you know, tell you they hate it so much. Right. But they're always yeah. in a dramatic relationship. Yeah. It gives them, it, it's like it makes them feel alive. Um, you know, it mm -hmm. gives them that dopamine spike, um, you know, that, that happy, that happy hormone. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, they can't exist if things are peaceful. Um, that makes them feel empty inside, like they've got a void, and they need to, you know, have drama around them so they feel alive. Sure. I need to know you care about me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and to validate me. If you're yelling at me, you're telling me that I'm important and that I matter. Sure. Yeah, your fight with me, you're not leaving. You, you, you'll stay. You care about me. Yeah. Security, absolutely. safety, six security. Yep. Okay. Hi, Angela. Yeah. Angela Brooks. Um, Jen, uh, Jen's back again. Jen says uh, she was the one, uh, Jen was the one that was talking about um, he provokes her when the children are there. And she says, yes, I do. But if face to face, the anxiety panic tends to override logic. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. And, and this comes from it. You, typically, you guys experience this. This comes from your childhood, typically. You know, you, you may have had a lifetime of this and not realize it. You've been reacting all the time. Yeah. And that, yeah. That, that's that's why we, we stress so much, Jen, um, and everyone else, uh, the importance of no contact. Uh, you know, and I, I know I'll have, I have lawyers and whatever, whoever else saying, well, you know, you've got kids, you have to have some kind of, face-to-face -face contact at some stage. Well, no, not when you've got a personality disordered X and you can't heal because your anxiety is going through the roof all the time. You can still maintain contact for the kids' sake 
through for the kids' sake through, you know, emails and, you know, maybe yeah. getting another phone that you have just for them. But, yeah, you, know, you have to find a way to control every, every engagement needs to be only about the child, children. Yeah. Not you, not yeah. me, not us. Yeah. Any face-to-face -face contact is going to end badly because yeah, even if you just look in their eyes, they, they, they've been able to, you know, they'll be able to manipulate you, um, even if it's just to ra raise your anxiety levels. And, you guys, you can't heal when you're in the same environment that you got sick, you have to get out of there. How about having the kids and spoiling it with gifts and candy and ice cream before they give them back to mom or dad oh. for dinner? I, I know, and, and I hear that, yeah, I hear that all the time too. And, you know, it, this is so cruel. And obviously the narcissist doesn't think about the children, but what they're doing is they're setting their own children up because the kids are going to have, you know, that spike of, um, you know, the, the sugar and, you know, what it does to their behaviour, certainly if they've got behavioural issues. And then, you know, they, they're probably going to be naughty and they're going to, you know, um, act badly. And when they're naughty, they're going to get in trouble from the non-abusive parent. So it's like you're setting your own kids up for, a, you know, to be, to be yelled at by that parent. Yeah, and you go home, and, and the kids go home, and now they have to eat their vegetables after they just ate a gallon of ice cream. And so they're not going to eat their vegetables, and you're the bad mommy or you're the bad daddy for making them. Yeah. yeah. Or, that, or you've got a routine going where, you know, you, you actually have to go to bed by, you know, 8.30 or whatever it is, and they're allowed to do, you know, whatever they want and, and be up and talking to, to adults and, you know, engaging in that adult conversation and, you know, being parentified and, you know, things like that. It's just, this is abuse, guys. It's abuse. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Big time. Yeah. So, yeah, please um, try to not have any face-to-face -face contact, uh, Jen, and keep it down to emails. I know that's going to be, you probably feel like you have to. Well, you don't. You don't have to. Not if it's still traumatising you. Yeah. Um. Okay. Jen says, oh, my God, that is spot on. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got Rebecca DeMarco here. Hi, Rebecca. Uh, who else have we got? We've got Sharon Dibble here. Um, Sharon says, well, it's a really long one. I can't see the end, Sharon. They, well, my ex doesn't respect any boundaries, uh, even when I put them in place to just talk with kids. Nothing but disrespect still to myself and yelling at me in front of the kids, ready to block completely. Well, it sounds like you're nearly there at what you, yeah, what we've just been talking about, which is blocking, hey, David? Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard to do when you share share uh, children. It is. And, and you know, I guess we've got to remember that um, it is hard to do, guys. I mean, I mean, crikey, you, you've, had, um, you've had this guy or oh, girl, you know, your, your ex-husband or your ex-wife um, managing down your boundaries for so long and probably saying things like, oh, you're a terrible mother, you are such a bad parent, and, you know, um, digging the boot into the very essence of us, which is if we're a parent, that's, you know, that's our, our identity, you know, our, we identify as a parent. Um, so, you know, when they've been telling you you're a bad mother or a bad father forever, for you to say, oh, no, you're, you're only going to have contact with the kids um, when it's court ordered um, to the narcissist. Well, once, well, for first, firstly, you're exerting authority in their mind over them. And secondly, you're, um, you're, you're breaking that, you're breaking that connection to them. You know, you're, you're not under their spell all the time. So th this is scary for you. And you think, um, well, maybe I am a bad mother. Or a bad father if I don't let them talk to the kids because good parents, you know, good parents let the other half talk to their kids. So it's well, all been, well, you know, the responsible thing is to be in contact with their friends' parents, right? Now we can't yeah. be in contact with their our own child child's parent. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. confusing. It is very confusing. Um, so I hope that's helped, Sharon. Uh, Rebecca, thank you. Every time I listen, you say the right things at the right time for me. 
Oh, I'm so glad. You must just tune in at the right times, Rebecca. Um, okay, who else have we got here? Um, not so many questions here um, tonight, guys. Um, where is everyone? Not a public holiday, I hope. Everyone's out. Okay, um, that's it for a little while, um, David. Um, did you want to um, maybe talk about um, what was the other topic we that you uh, that you raised that um, we were going to talk about uh, tonight? Oh, I can't remember. To be honest, oh, I can't remember what that was. That was too long ago, Nova. That was. Oh, um, the being being. I think it was being vulnerable. Being that you know the, those those core wounds that make us um, vulnerable to the narcissist and. Um, you know, and I guess addressing those and, and being aware of them. Yeah, I mean, we, we say they're textbook, but really they get to know you and they get to know your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities, your core vulnerability. Yeah. Um, typically shame or fear, uh, uh, shame of being a bad person or fear of deprivation, fear of losing things, de being deprived of things we need. That's usually okay. what abusers will attack that those fear, those core fears. Yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah, ab abandonment, rejection, all these things. It's like, you know, it's like they're a robot, <laughs> you know, yeah. that they had this this radar. But really they're not that magical, you know, they're, they're not that smart because they're, they're gathering all this data, aren't they, when they're mirroring you. They're, they're, sure. they're soaking up. All that information so you know if you said oh yeah I, I did have a bad childhood and my dad you know walked out on mum and I saw you know I saw mum cheating on dad or you know I never had a, a parent around they never wanted to talk to me well what you're doing is you're you're notifying the, the narcissist of your core wound which you know a lot of the time or most of the time if you're with the narcissist you haven't addressed yeah I mean here's the best way to get a reaction out of me here's my yeah. weakness yeah, let, let's, yeah, and they exploit it. They exploit that, bring it up as much as they can. Yeah. Oh, you feel afraid and, of me um, leaving you? If, if you're afraid of me leaving you, then I know that I can always, in some subtle way, threaten that, that, that yeah. security. Yeah. yeah. And um, hi, we've got um, Jody Campbell here, says, hey, Nova and David. Hi, Jody. We've got Julie Harrison here. Hi, um, Julie. Um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, just with regard to the, to the core wound, um, David, a lot of the time victims, they just don't know, or, you know, it just kind of doesn't resonate on a, on a, um, a conscious level that that's often pushing them to seek out, you know, these, these toxic people. And they, you know, I've been asked that the question I know you have too, you know, why do I keep attracting these toxic, toxic people? Um, and it's, it's, it becomes really interesting when you sit down and talk to them and, and you find out that when they're in a room full of people, they ignore potentially healthy people. You know, they might be snobby or they, they might think that they're just too good for them. But what they're doing is they're, they're, they're seeing people that aren't toxic and they're heading straight for the bad boys or the bad girls who are toxic. And they think, well, that's just the type of people I like. And really, if we really get down to what you know, what you what you talk about all the time is those core wounds and that neglect and that stuff that went on for us as kids. That's what is per, you know propelling us in the direction of the toxic people. Not that Absolutely. you know, oh, we just like them. Absolutely, and, and I think the real message here should be: we need to heal from things. We need to heal from trauma, pain. Because this is what happens if we don't heal. And it's a, I mean, it's everything. I, if you think about it, you know, children can handle pretty, pretty a good amount of trauma, really. And, and it's about the care, the nurturing, the comforting that they get afterwards. It's so important. Um, a yeah. child can watch and see some pretty traumatic things. And then they have parents there that always meet their needs, always make them feel safe, secure, and nurtured, loved. And so they're there to help that child get through it. And that usually isn't too much of a traumatic event in their, for the rest of their life. You know, yeah. I mean, you could get into things I looked up and as we know, there's hundreds of different disorders out there, aren't there? But yeah. here's one, a reactive attachment disorder. And, and that is a child that had, you know, 
has from a, from events, a single event or series of events, that's unexplained irritability, sadness, fearfulness, even during non-threatening events from their caretaker. So they have been set up right away as early, early on in childhood to just constantly be so reactionary all the time. And I think that's just showing that the parent never taught the child coping skills and the child never ever healed from their trauma. And I think that's really important. I think that's a lot of what has to do with us reacting so much to people who are, are you know, poking prod us, prodding us, uh, exploiting us, our vulnerabilities. You know, if we have been healed from this stuff, it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, it would be it's so rad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just amazing points there. Um, I think the other really important thing to remember about, you know, other reasons why, why, why you manage to stay even when you kind of work out that they're abusive and you you stay there um, is because they when they were children they had to survive in this war zone they had to survive in that trauma so to be able to survive in that trauma they had to develop coping mechanisms and they also had to develop resilience so these coping mechanisms which are you know could be putting up a, a shield to you know to um, stop anyone from hurting them, to shield them from pain, they can also shield, that shield can also shield out people that can help them and love them and that are actually healthy. So, yeah, faulty coping ne mechanisms, which, which weren't actually faulty, they actually protect you when you're a child. It's kind of like, you know, dissociating from the trauma yeah. and being able to cope in that trauma. But these coping mechanisms, which were, I guess, needed back then, we take with us, but they become um, faulty when, when we get into relationships as an adult. Yeah, they really do. I mean, it, it sets us up to keep fighting, really. We, we stay in the fight. Yeah. I mean, trauma bonding, right? This is trauma bonding, guys. You know, yeah. staying in trauma, trauma, trauma for a long time. Now you're like bonded with this person through trauma, through the trauma you've experienced. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're so resilient. We, I mean, hey, this toxicity, I can handle that because I handled so much more when I was a kid. Of course, this is all on a subconscious level. So, you know, I'm not, I'm going to fix this, you know, and often they will project the parents, you know, how the parent was, they will project that, you know, onto their partner. But this time they're empowered. You know, I'm an adult this time and I'm not letting them walk away. I'm going to fix this. Because I'm resilient, I'm used to toxicity, and they ain't going nowhere. Hyper vigilance, right? I mean, that's yeah. why you guys are so hyper vigilant. Yeah. Yeah, hyper vigilance, absolutely. On the on the lookout for for the attack, and yeah, knowing knowing what, what to do in in you know yeah. in time of attack. Yeah. Yeah, ready for the fight. I say, just always ready for that fight. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Okay, uh, we've got, who else have we got here tonight? Um, Jody says, uh, if you've been asked to open your wounds and pour salt on it, where do you start when there's so much pain and suffering? I have trouble trusting anymore as I feel like I'm being set up to fail. Oh, my goodness, Jody. David, do you want to um, tackle that one? Start from the, the most recent pain first yeah. and go backwards. And you go backwards and, and you move on once you feel better about it. Yeah. It's real important. And don't be distracted. Don't start new tra traumatic relationships with people until you've healed these kinds of things. Yeah. And, yeah. and don't minimize, Jody. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of people like you and, and David does too, where we see, you know, the, they have this wall, you know, um, which is helpful, you know, um, in, in a, it ca can keep pain out, but it, it also stops, you know, a lot of help from from coming in. And don't don't brush over. I hear so many people that come to see me. They, you know, I know I've spoken about this before, but um, a classic example, David, would be, you know, a, a sexual abuse. Um, you know, I've had victims come to see me, and um, you know, that they've just rushed over it like oh look it wasn't as bad as what most people go through it's just a little thing but I really don't want to talk about that and you know I'm like hang on a minute let's let's you know let's talk about that and they think well there's really nothing 
but it really is something. So don't minimize anything. You know, it, your, yeah. your pain and your trauma is valid. Right. I mean, we tend to block out things that were traumatic, ignore things that were really bad, minimize. We do so bad. Yeah. And that, that you, you minimize what they do and always remember what you've done in reaction. Yeah. And, and that's, it, that's a, I guess, a coping mechanism, isn't it? If we, if we don't think it's really bad and uh, we just brush it off as, you know, um, oh, they didn't really mean to do it or they, you know, they, were, they weren't in their white, right mind, maybe they had a few too many drinks or, or whatever, we rationalise it. It's also a coping mechanism, isn't it, because mm -hmm. it protects us from really addressing the, the abuse that is going on. So it, it's, yeah, it's another coping mechanism. Yeah, yeah it's really not that bad. The fire is really not that hot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, justify it, rationalize it, and you <laughs> minimize your own abuse to be able to get through it. Yeah, and that's what we do. We take that into a relationship with, you know, with a narcissist, with a, with a toxic individual. We, we, we justify, we rationalize, and we minimize. It's not that bad. I've been through worse than that, you know, and we, we give them the benefit of the doubt. They're having a bad day, you know, Um yeah, and it's 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 conditioning. Well, I mean, and I, 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 we could have addictions, start drinking, drugs, drug abuse, stuff like this. Yeah, you know? I mean, how common is that? To you know, that that's another thing, um, David. I, I see, and I know you would too. I see so many people that to cope, you know, to cope with the trauma and the anxiety and the CPTSD. Um, um, depression, all that stuff that's going on that they have to endure. And a lot of the time there's, you know, there's not enough help out there um, to, to uh -huh. validate their pain. Um, they start, yeah, they, they might start drinking to, to numb their senses. They start self-medicating. And, of course, you know, that's used against them, their, their yeah. reaction to the abuse. Yeah. I mean, the two most common words I, I associate with CPTSD is hopelessness and helplessness. You, or, or I say uh, you, you find yourself in a fear cage where you don't know what to do. You can't leave. You, you're, you're, you don't have the coping skills. You don't have any support. You're left alone always to deal with this stuff. You, yeah. You're, you're going to react. Your reaction is going to be hu huge someday. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all around loss of uh, no control, no control over your life. You, you see no way out and you see no way to control anything. So, yeah, you, you, you react and, and you want to you get rid of that pain. Sure. Losing a sense of who we are. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, unfamiliar, shameful behavior. Yeah. You know, verbally, physically assaulted, whatever it may be. Things we're embarrassed, guilty, and ashamed of. That stacks yeah. and piles on top of each other. And a lot of times we tend to act out and abusing drugs you know, yeah. we can become the abuser, but we could also abuse ourselves. We could abuse that's drugs and other people. Yeah. At victims get told all the time, you know, you're no good, you know, you're, you're, you, and you do start to believe it through the gaslighting and, you, yeah, you, you get shame ridden. Um, and so you, I guess, you treat yourself badly. You treat yourself so poorly, you, you, you know, and you do engage in, in, in self Sabotage, if you will. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The victim's self-sabotage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I hope this is, um, is resonating with you guys around, you know, why, why you do react. It's not your fault. Um, you're being provoked. But, you know, what I, what I say to people who come to see me, you know, what your trauma your, is valid. Your abuse is valid. It happened to you, and it's no less valid than anyone else's trauma. Um, and it wasn't your responsibility to prevent that abuse. It was not your responsibility, but it is your responsibility to heal. That's on your yeah. shoulders. Yeah. Right. No one That's else is right. going to do it for you. That's right. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so look, I, I hope that's kind of um, helped a, a little bit, um, Jody. Where do you start with so much pain? You start with baby steps. And as David said, start with something recent and kind of, you know, work backwards, but don't minimize your pain and what you've been through. Don't do it alone. Try not to do it alone, please. Yeah, get support. Yeah. 
Um, Jen says, but the, does that make something, does that mean that there is something wrong with us by being like that? Hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm assuming you mean if I react to the, the, the abuse, does that mean there's something wrong with me? Um, David, did you want to um, answer that? Well, I think if we're, in a, if we're in an unhealthy relationship, it's fair to say we're unhealthy. Uh, I'm not going to say there's something wrong with you. Uh, what we've been trying to say is that, you know, these are normal reactions to abuse. Yeah. So these are normal. These are normal. I mean, how, or how do you define what's normal when you're being abused? Because abuse isn't normal, you know, but, but this, we're talking about how we react to abuse. And uh, it, there's all kinds of different ways, but often hurt people hurt people too. If we've been hurt, we hurt other people. And that is just huge. If you guys look at, you know, narcissists, sociopaths, borderlines, they've been hurt. They've been, they're hurt people. They're victimized too. So they have, they're also victims that hurt people as well. <clears throat> so we we're victimized and we, we tend to hurt other people sometimes too. Yeah. The so. difference with us though is we experience remorse and <clears throat> empathy and we recognize our behavior. Whereas, so uh, yeah, just be careful. You don't <laughs> lead that to make you feel sorry for them because that part of their brain is, is switched off forever. Um, there's no, there's no, no remorse, no compassion, um, or no, and no empathy for you. You will be the next victim. Yeah. That's right. And, 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 that's, and knowing that we've done something wrong, that's how we change. That's the only way yeah. we change is to be able to take some kind of accountability, responsibility to our own. And you can, and it's a good thing to say, yeah, I'm not happy or proud of my behavior. That's why we don't do it again. But they never change and keep doing it, don't they? Over and over and over again. Yeah. So and and that you just did. You? Yeah. Is there something wrong with you? I think it'd be better to say, do you believe you did something wrong? Yeah. Fix and, and you've just answered everyone's question there, which which would be, um, you, you know, does the narcissist, you know, feel, can they change? Well, you just, as what you just said was perfect. You said, well, we can only change if we think we're accountable, you know, and we're aware that we've done something wrong, as in we experience remorse, you know, all, all that kind of thing. That's why a narcissist, guys, I, we get asked this all the time, a narcissist will not change simply because they don't feel that they are doing or have done anything wrong. So there is no capacity for change there. They, this is who they are. I mean, look, guys, they always, they never say they did anything wrong. It's always you. And then you guys are sitting there going, I did all these things wrong. I think I'm the narcissist. Narcissists yeah. don't do that. So the more you guys ask me, am I the narcissist, the easier <laughs> it is for me to say, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, as we know, a narcissist can't self-reflect, can they? They can't um, go, oh, you know, did I, did I do something wrong that hurt someone? Did I hurt someone? I feel bad about that. That will never happen. Yeah. No, that doesn't support a false ego very well. No. no. Yeah. And and that's that's yeah, that's right. That's um a narcissist has that false ego to maintain. And you know, if you dare to see or get a glimpse of their true self, you know, that's you will you will be punished. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, we've got um, Tony Ann here. Hi, Tony Ann. Uh, Tony Ann says, now that I've let out what happened in my 15-year marriage after 10 months apart, people always say then, what was wrong with you? It takes two to tango. That hurts. Oh, I hate that saying, two to tango. Um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't. When you're in a relationship with a, a toxic person like this, like a narcissist, um, Tony, no, that is, that, that's victim blaming, you know, and obviously they don't know the extent of, of what happened. They certainly don't know the dynamic of the relationship, but it's victim blaming. No, it doesn't take two to tango. Um, this was all the, you know, the abuser's fault. This was not your fault at all. Yeah, I, I think this is one of the easiest things to victim blame and victim shame that I've ever seen or heard, you know. And, and it's it's amazing how much people judge things they know nothing about. Uh, they know nothing about and all of a sudden they're a judge, aren't they? Even our loved ones, you know, it's they can 
if, you, if they don't know anything about this type of abuse, then it can even come from our loved ones. Well, what if, you're, what if your caretakers were the ones that started it? This is so common, right? And then they grow up, and then now they're in these abusive relationships, and their parents, who started all this in the beginning, now they're shaming them again. Look at you in this bad, abusive relationship. It must be your fault. Yeah. I remember yeah. how bad you were when you and were a I'm kid. And I'm here. As usual, I'm here, and I'm cool and calm and collected. And you're in a bad relationship. Absolutely. It, it, yep. it perpetuates their abuse and it even goes into adulthood. It's, it's I don't know good. why you're treating him. I don't know why you're treating him like that. He's a great guy. Yeah, you say, gotta... I told you everything he or she did. He's they're not yeah. great. But the parents don't care. The parents love this. Yeah. They do this to you. Yeah. Yeah. Toxic narcissistic parents. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually put a post out um this week, David kind of, um, I just remembered it, on, co, on the word codependent. I, I really struggle with that word. I, I don't like the word codependent because that it resonates of victim blaming to me. Um, and I yeah. think so often you guys, and, I, you know, David and I would love to know if you've been labelled that, um, you get labelled as codependent, which is mistaken for trauma bonding. Trauma bonding is not your fault, whereas codependent, it kind of resonates of, oh, there's something wrong with me. You know, I'm a codependent. That's why I can't stay away from this person. Um, and, yeah, it's just – I'm not saying there's not people who aren't codependent, but it's so often used out of – uh, sorry, in the wrong context. Sure. And I, I think there's components of codependency that, that, that have to be, you know, with this yeah. included, included yeah. but – uh, the, the the label codependency I I don't like either and I think that uh, it was an old term used it was great for the 80s you know when, yeah. when you brought home beer for your husband that beats the crap out of you every night because he's too drunk but you brought him home, you brought him the beer yeah. but to say that I gave the authority to somebody else to emotionally abuse me it, it can't apply it's just not yeah. it's not appropriate I don't think it's appropriate that's, it doesn't yeah. best explain that's, what's going on the dynamics yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if, it, if it's going to be used in any context, or oh, it has to be used with along you know, in in the context of these relationships. It has to be used alongside or um, overshadowed by trauma bonding, because trauma bonding is what keeps you hooked, and that is not your fault. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, if you guys want to uh, something you deal with, look up de uh, dependency personality disorder. And I, and I think that's better explains what somebody is just a total doormat. And that's what people are accusing victims of being. And yeah. it's like, nah, no, it, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. It, it's, it's so like, it's you know, just how, you know, how do you give someone the authority to do something? You don't even know it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's exactly right. You know, you, you don't know, you, like I keep saying, you don't know what you don't know. So you don't know that you were being gaslighted because it starts off so slowly and so subtly until um, you're doing what they want and you don't even know it. So, yeah, you don't know that you're being abused. You, you didn't know silent treatment or, or walking out of the door during a, during a discussion is abuse. A lot of people don't, aren't aware of these things. Yeah, yeah, and stonewalling, yeah. It, it, it absolutely yeah. is abuse and it says, it, it tells you that you're worthless you know, um, it, it triangulation, it, triangulation. A lot of us aren't aware that it, that that's what they're doing. We think somebody yeah. else is entering the relationship. We don't know that they're bringing somebody else into the relationship. Yeah, yeah, bringing a, a third party in simply to you know hoist themselves up and um, make them seem like this wanted commodity. Or fight over them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, create feelings of jealousy amongst people because you know people are fighting over me. People are jealous. You know that 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 makes me powerful. I I feel really good about myself. Yeah, how do you not react when I come home and, and and if you're my wife and I tell you about the new girl at at work that just made a pass at me and gave me her phone number for the fifth time? Yeah. How, how do you not react? And you know she's gorgeous or something. You know. Of course. But yeah. but nothing happened. So why are you why are you reacting to that? Nothing happened. So there goes, there comes the gaslighting and perhaps, you know, next week it'll be, oh, I had lunch with someone's, you know, such and such. 
you know, maybe the, the same person. And of course, we, we, as we, a had a company person, lunch. Yeah, we had a company lunch, but everybody left earlier. It, was just, it ended up being just me and her alone for lunch at the table. Yeah. Don't so worry, why are you freaking out? What could I have done? Yeah, yeah. and that, that's triangulation, isn't it? Because um, and like people don't even have to know that they're, they're involved, you know. Um, you can you can be triangulated and not even know about it like that girl at work mightn't even know that the the husband has said anything to his wife so here she is being triangulated to make the husband feel important and she's got no idea that she's been yeah. you know brought in to this relationship to uh to implement um to sorry to instill insecurity anxiety and you know feelings of jealousy in the wife um yeah, triangulation. How about the female that comes home and tells her husband or boyfriend, uh, so and so won't leave me alone, keeps making passes at me. He put his hand on me, you know. Oh, <laughs> you know what that yeah. does to a guy? It's just like Yeah. 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 And, and it's 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 that's what she wants, isn't it? It's designed to elicit those feelings of, of, of jealousy and you know, what what's this guy doing touching my wife and 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 that type of thing and meanwhile she's doing this on purpose to make her partner insecure and a healthy yeah. relationship um your partner does not want you to be insecure a healthy relationship in a healthy relationship your partner wants you to feel supported not anxious and insecure how about this here's a here's a sick question you that you might be asked if you're in a relationship with a histrionic borderline narcissist or sociopath would you kill for me? Would you die for me? I mean, what more reaction do you are you looking for from somebody? Yeah. You know, just, right? Yeah. Will you die for uh, me? Will you kill for me? The mind boggles, doesn't it? Oh, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I know we kind of got sidetracked, but just so many, um, you know, just so many things that they do to get a reaction out of you, which I guess is kind of bringing us back to the initial initial. Um, initial topic which was reactive abuse yeah um trisha craig hi trisha uh trisha says so becoming a narcissist stems from not being able to deal with emotions from a young age um yeah it, it definitely can david did you want to respond to that yeah yeah i mean this is a developmental problem disorder that happens in childhood during child development and uh trauma hinders it stops it halts that development so they're yeah. stuck there in that emotional development stage wherever this trauma started began and uh yeah, yeah they, they they never were taught they have an emotional void they were never taught coping skills management skills stuff like this yeah so yeah absolutely so basically um trisha they're abused in some kind of way they experienced some kind of trauma you know whatever that may be um and to deal with that trauma, they, they, they shut off, you know, that, that empathy switch. Their emotional intelligence, as David just said, stopped. It stopped growing at about, I don't know, about the age of five or six. That's why you feel like you're talking to a petulant five-year-old, you know, um, when you're arg arguing with them. Um, you know, to, to be able to handle that abuse, I guess you could call it a coping mechanism, they develop what we call a false mask. Now, this false mask is... No one can break through that and no one will. They guard that false self with their life. It's not a game to them. And that true self, that insipid little child, is buried deep within them. But, yeah, to, to be able to maintain that false self and that superiority that no one can hurt me, they need to hurt others to be able to, I guess, um, you know, feel superior, feel powerful and, and not be hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, yeah, there's a lot to it, but I guess that's the essence of it, yeah. Yeah, they, they can't show vulnerability. They can't face responsibility, accountability. No. They won't face no. anything they've done because they're they're very shamed, very full of shame, shame-based. They feel like Absolutely. bad people, so they counter it with, I'm a great person, but for no reason. Yeah, that, that true self, um, that's the vulnerable, weak, you know, child that's, that you'll ne you that will they will never allow to be exposed and if you do get a glimpse of it you are punished um you know so so horrendously but um yeah it, it's 
their, their life depends on maintaining that that mask that they wear, and they do it at, at anyone's expense, even their own children. Yeah, rage is a good good example of that they can't deal with certain things. Um, we learn to cope with with stuff instead of having a temper tantrum when we're four, five, six, or seven. By the age after seven, you better you better not have temper tantrums anymore. Um, narcissists, borderline, something this they still have temper tantrums in their 30s, 40s, and 50s because they don't know how to deal with stuff. Yeah. 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 And because they don't have the, the, and that's because their emotional intelligence stopped at that age. They didn't develop that emotional maturity that, you know, (laughs) non-disordered people like you and I and, and everyone out there like we did. So, you know, they don't feel, you know, you ask if, can they love? No, they don't have that, you know. They they attach, they objectify everyone for what they can get out of it. So, no, they don't feel love like you and I do. Um, you know, I, I guess an analogy I like to use, um, Trisha, is um, I, I call it the empathy switch, okay. So when they um, had to develop that false self when they were young, that empathy switch that we all have, it's switched off like a light. It's switched off forever okay so um they they can't that they feel like david said they feel the probably the only emotions they feel is rage and envy they envy you and they think everyone's envious of them but you know love and compassion and kindness and you know all those kinds of things that that you and i experience no that that that's the void they have and they need you to fill that void yeah they're, they're stuck in me mode just me me, 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 the little child, the little baby. Yeah. 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 If there's a, you know, there's a lot to be said, I guess, um, for, you know, um, Freudian, you know, theory, um, psycho, uh, psychoanalysis, you know, where, where Freud talked a lot about, about the ego, you know, and um, that, that's, that, that is so right with the, with the narcissist because it is, it's all about the ego and maintaining that <sighs> ego. Um, and anything that's a threat to that ego is is destroyed, literally destroyed. That's why they need to destroy your lives because you saw behind the mask and you had the potential to expose them. Yeah, smear, number one cause, number one reason smear campaigns start. They believe you're going to expose them. They'll believe if you know that if you date them long enough that you saw behind the mask, even if you did not. They'll, they'll yeah. think you did and they're paranoid. They'll start smear campaigning you right away because you're oh, going to experience it, that. Yeah. Absolutely. Their, <laughs> their perceptions, it, you know, it doesn't matter if something happened or not. It's, it's their perceptions. If they perceive that you're, that, you know, you're somehow criticizing them or if they perceive, you can say anything and they might perceive a, a, an ounce of criticism out of that and they will set out to destroy you, you know, so it, it right. doesn't have to have happened. Yeah, that's right. I mean, don't forget these people have very poor sense of self, who they are, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, that's why they yeah. white people so quick. Yeah. Don't they? They, yeah. they you, you will know that, um, guys, um, and once again, love to hear your, your comments. Um, how many people did the, the narcissist in your life wipe and go, oh, they're terrible people, you know, and, and just completely eliminate them from their life, you know, it, it happens all the time that they, and it, all it is is because they perceive some probably minuscule criticism that may not even have happened. And they need to, to punish that person and get rid of them. Yeah, it made them feel vulnerable for just a second. Yeah. Okay, so hope that's helped, Trisha. Um, who else have we got? We've got Andy Stevens here. Hi, Andy. Uh, Vicky's here. Hi, Vicky. Vicky Botch, I think it's pronounced. Normal people does can take and accept responsibility, but a narc abuser wouldn't know what responsibility is. Yeah. Yeah, right. you said it, Vicky. Absolutely. Spot on. Oops, a daisy. Sorry, guys. Lost the screen there. Um, okay, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. We've got Tyler here. Hi, uh, Tyler. Um, Vicky says, yes, I agree, Nova. Yeah. Um, Jackie says... My ex narc used to always say, I promise I will never hurt you because then I'm hurting myself. But he kept hurting me. Yeah. Um, or, or they get you to promise that you will never hurt them. 
Yeah. It, it's just a way of keeping you hooked in the relationship, Jackie. It's number one, it's a lie. It, it's, it's manipulation because they're saying, well, clearly they wouldn't want to hurt themselves. So they're not going to intentionally hurt you too. So it's just I don't know, kind of reverse psychology, but whatever it is, it's just gaslighting designed to keep you hooked in the, in the relationship. Yeah. Okay. Um, who else have we got? We've got um, Jen Claxton, very kindly. David says, you are both amazing. Thank you, Jen. Thank <laughs> Lovely you, Jen. kind words there. Um, Vicky says, yes, David, the 70s and 80s had a different view on different facets mm -hmm. of things. So I'm assuming she's maybe talking about the codependency um, to even the 90s, let alone these days today. Yeah. No, now, um, nowadays it's, uh, you know, the new age healing don't think about your past, live in today, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. All don't, that time. don't address any issues in your past. I know you're thinking about it. I know it's bothering you, but forget about it. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's just move on. Let, let's move let's on. Move and on. Oh, were they, were they calling you names? Oh, you know, get over it. <laughs> Sticks and stones will break your bones, but names they never hurt you. That's oh, a great, God. that's a great uh, neglectful parent, you know. Yeah. Training yeah. tool, right? Absolutely. Oh, I, I yeah, I got I got picked on today. I got beat up today. So, you know, peers called me a bunch of names. Oh, sticks and stones. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. It's just um, <clears throat> excuse me. Once again, you know, minimizing your your pain. And and what does it teach you? It teaches you not to talk about your trauma. It teaches you to internalize it. And it teaches you that, oh, there's a lot worse going on in the world than my trauma. So you you, you take it into your relationships, don't you, because you've been taught to minimise what gives you pain. Right. And it doesn't matter. My feelings don't matter. So I will try to ignore them. I will try to suppress them. I will take drugs. I will drink. I will work all the time. You know, whatever I can do to ignore Everything. how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, other than pulling out what's all that, that stuff. But yeah, people will do everything, won't they, um, rather than pull out that wound, you know, and address those open wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's a good one. Yeah. Here's a good one for you, David. Um, Brad Sengstock. Hi, Brad. Brad says, uh, is there no way to get through to them about this false self? No. No, no, it's the one way to get rid of them. And because you're exposing them, you're exposing them. Yeah. And that's the, that's their core vulnerability. They won't have it. What you're doing in them is, is the only way to do that is to show them they're a bad person. That's all you're doing. Yeah. Um, but just be also be careful because um, it, in like you know as we know we never tell a narcissist they're a narcissist because it backfires um because they are more manipulative than you are smart believe me um just make sure that um you when when you're exposing them uh, you, you're just doing it you know it, it's from from no a place of no contact that's the most important thing is going brad uh, brad is going no contact um don't approach them and say hey you're i've got you pegged i know your number you're a narcissist because it will Backfire, won't it, David? Yeah, sure. Well, you just rattle their entire life. It's a total threat Absolutely. to their existence. And plus, you're, you're, you're like a poker player. You're handing all your cards over and telling them your 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 next move, because um, you know, once once you know, Brad, that they're a narcissist, you hold all the cards. You you hold all the cards. You have the position of power. The problem is, people have been so ground down through the abuse they don't recognize that and they, they have to get to you know a place of healing before they recognize that, that they do have that power but you know once you know they're a narcissist you can go hey I'm not reacting to you I'm going no contact I'm going to be successful in my life I'm not even going to try and get revenge against you and you hold all the cards that's the best reaction ever none yeah. It, it shows them you don't need them, you don't want them, you don't care about them, and that's the, the, the cruelest, meanest thing you can do to a narcissist. It's the yeah. cure to narcissism, guys. 
ignore, ignore them. them. Yeah. Um, tell them about their false self. Uh, can you get through to them? No. They, they, they don't think there's anything wrong with them, um, Brad. So if you tell them they've got a false self, they'll probably call you the crazy one. So, um, yeah. They'll just project it and flip it right out on you. Yeah. And it'll just be an argument of pointing fingers, blame game, and they'll always win. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Brad said, oh, sorry, uh, Michelle. We've got Michelle Joseph there. Hi, Michelle. Hey, guys, how do you deal with one who has been exposed and will not let go? No contact is very difficult with children, question mark. I know, Michelle. Um, love any advice on this. Thanks, guys. Very much needed. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it is difficult, Michelle, with children, but you can develop strategies. We call it grey rock. Um, grey rock. What is a grey rock? It sits there and does nothing. Um, Minimal contact, no reactions. You don't have to see your abuser face to face. Um, you, if you, if you're only seeing emails, you know you can't hear the tone in their voice. You can't. You, you've got less to react to. It's about giving absolutely minimal response and no emotional reactions whatsoever because that's what they thrive on. Yeah. So you, you can have. Sorry, David. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, extreme measures needed are needed with extreme behavior and if they're violating your space your boundaries all these things then take the appropriate measures um yeah. and these are all questions you ask your lawyer uh because yeah. your lawyers will tell what to do they know what to do they dealt with this stuff you know and document everything i don't care if you think that they're being cooperative now you don't know that they will be in six months yeah. so document That's everything keep it file reports uh, uh, tell your lawyer and get restraining orders if you have to, because these things yeah. can't, people can't harass you. Yeah. They can't, they're not allowed to harass you, unwanted attention. And it doesn't mean that, that they can because you have a child with someone. Yeah. And, and keep so, it to yeah, email. That, you have email, to. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant advice um, from David there, Michelle. Um, you do not have to have contact with your abuser. Okay, and that's what I want you to, you know, if this person psychologically abused you, then start calling him by that, okay? Obviously not in front of your children. Um, but there's, you can't be having contact with someone who um, if, if your anxiety levels go through the roof and you can't heal and move forward. If that's happening, you have to, you have to stop it, you know? You can still talk about the kids through email. You don't have to see them face to face. Is it ideal that you will never be able to go to a parent-teacher interview again together or that you won't be able to sit together in the front row at their next piano concert? Yeah, it's really sad that, that you will never experience that. But you can't be the best mum you can be if you're traumatised all the time. And that's what you have to recognise. This is not an ideal situation, but it's what you have to do if you're being traumatised. You guys got to heal from this first. You, you heal from this, give us some time. You'll be able to deal with them better later, trust me. When you're not attached to them anymore, when you're not emotionally invested, when you don't remember and, and, and get triggered by painful memories and stuff, you'll be able to handle yeah. these people better, trust me. And you got you to gotta be the one in control. I think a real, uh, an absolute manipulation tactic is being nice. So we will go through all kinds of traumatic uh, uh, things in our relationship and then it's over, and now we deal with children, and you'll say, oh, they're being nice. They're being cooperative. So so I let them do what they want. I, I give them the kids when they want. I, I do. No. no. No, you're, you're letting them be in control. I don't yeah. care if they're being nice in that. Uh, you know, it's got, I, would, I would say come up with a strict plan, visitation no. plan with your lawyer, and you stick to it, and there's no need for any outside communication except yeah. about that. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, Michelle said, very true. And I'm doing this. I feel so much lighter. According to law enforcement, he hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah. And he, he won't have in the eyes of the law, because as we know, psychological abuse is covert. You know, it's covert. It's people, you know, it's like the dog whistle. Other people don't see it. They don't hear it. Um, Co so, courts don't care about you know, he said, she said. Courts don't care yeah, about that. 
sports aren't going to see this, but you're not doing anything wrong, okay? Don't forget you've been conditioned, probably been told you're a bad mother and all this kind of rubbish. Um, you've been, this has been conditioned in you. So, but there is nothing wrong um, by following an order. You must have strict orders in place that aren't flexible at all and being consistent with those. And there is nothing um, about being a bad mother, about putting an email in place if that stops um, you from being traumatised because it's in the children's best interest that they have a parent who's trauma-free. And how do you get someone to react better than, than when it's about their children? You guys yeah. still have to try not to react to these things. Oh, Johnny said something horrible about you while he was over here. Ignore. Anyways, I'll pick the kids up at 9 o'clock. Goodbye. Yep. Absolutely. No emotional response. I call it the robot face. Um, when, you know, when I have parents come to see me that are having all sorts of troubles with the ex, I say, if you absolutely have to see them, and I don't advise seeing them, having face-to-face -face contact, but if you absolutely have to, the robot face, not even an eyebrow raise, monotone voice, do not give them any emotional reaction whatsoever, which you can do. You can just give them an emotional reaction by raising an eyebrow or you know, giving them a sneer, even you know, letting them know you're angry through a, a facial expression. We'll let them know. Yeah, I'm getting to rolling it. I'm eyes. getting to him. Yep. Yeah, shaking That's your what, head, no rolling face your face. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and your anxiety, oh, you'll yeah. get frustrated and your anxiety will, you know, will raise and it's just not a good situation. Yeah. Okay, guys, we might um, just answer a couple more and then we might um, wrap it up for the night. Okay. Um, Jen says, um, my situation has gotten to a point where I can't attend anything he may possibly be at. Yeah. Um, that isn't fair to our children. Um, he only appears cooperative. Oh, lost that. He only, stay. He only appears cooperative in front of the court um, yeah, I can't see the end, but th that just kind of says it all, doesn't David? Putting on your best behaviour for for that stage. The court is just a stage for them. Right. And document yeah. everything. Document everything. Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, and I'm certainly tr not trying to, um, you know, minimise what you've been through, Jen, but of course they're going to put on their best performance when they're in the courts and it, that's why this is where this reactive abuse comes in because here you are you're rattled you've been abused for so long you've been gaslighted, and they're sitting there butter wouldn't melt in their mouth going see I, I told you your honor you know she's 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 got some issues and I've encouraged or him I've encouraged him to seek help and you know I just want to do the right thing by my children and have a parent yeah. that's that's all there and that's mentally healthy, Your Honour. And here you are, you know, probably, you know, can't string a thought together because you're so frustrated and anxious. And, um, you know, this, this is what they do. You've just got to you know, really here's, look at what they're doing. Here's more reactionary behaviour. I want to just go down a couple more reactionary behaviours, uh, sure. reactionary abusive behaviours. And yep. the, uh, how about stalking? and violating people's boundaries, your mate's boundaries. And if you have somebody that's cheated on you, never made you feel better about it, triangulates you with other people, women, men, right? You're gonna be suspicious now. You're gonna be suspicious. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna look in their wallets, in their purses, on their computers, their phones. You're gonna follow them, see if they're really at work. And that's <laughs> a setup, isn't it? Because now, now you're paranoid in their eyes. So once again, you're proving why they had to cheat. They had to cheat because look at you. Yeah, yeah, right. They know you're doing that. You've been accusing me of cheating on you for the last year, two years. So you know. I might as well do it. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, accusations, constantly accusing them of cheating. Where were you? Where have you been? You know, that, that kind of stuff. You're not proud of that later. You're not proud of that. You're embarrassed. You're ashamed of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, doing your own silent treatment, your own abandonment. Like I said, leaving. How about this? This is something common. 
guys, guys that are in relationships with female abusers that physically abuse, like fights, you know, those fights, it's like some of those fights are the ones that get to that physical point. And as a guy, guys know what's the only thing you can do. Only thing you can do is leave, 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 yeah. leave. So, so say you always know that you kind of always get that feeling, you know, when it's going to get to that, you know, with one of these fights, the way it starts, you know, it's going to get to that point. So you leave, you leave early before it even starts. Well, what if you leave too early? What if, what if you, it's just a simple little spat and you, you're gone, you know, out of that reactionary, you're used to leaving whenever there's a fight, whenever there's a fight. And now you come back and it's, I can't believe you abandoned me. I can't believe you don't try. I can't believe you just leave all the time whenever there's a fight. Yeah. Hypervigilance. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like preempting an attack. So you, you get out of there before the, the attack occurs. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. then now you're just abandoning the relationship all the time. Yeah. Your reaction wow. is now abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jen says, oh, my God, were you in the court? Were you in our courtroom? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, unfortunately it's what they do, Jen. So please try and, you know, now that you're a bit more aware, try and, um, uh, stem your, your reactions. Don't give them what they want. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we might start to, to wrap it up. Um, there, David, did you have anything else that you, you wanted to say with regard to, um, reactive abuse? Yeah. Um, you know, th this causes thought patterns. This kind of reactionary thing is, is develops thought patterns in our, in our minds, and that is how we're used to always doing things. And uh, if we're always used to reacting, the way we change that, guys, is we change our thought patterns with our behavior, okay? So start getting in control of your reaction. Start being in control of your emotions, okay? Take your time. You, you don't always have to react right away. You have time, okay? Deep breaths. Just a little, 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 little hint there to to work on things like that, okay? Yeah, absolutely, okay. All right, guys, well, it's been a, um, a great show. Uh, I think we've come up with some, uh, we've had some really good questions and we've had some really good stuff come out of tonight. Um, so I hope it's all helped you. Please uh, like and share, 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 share. Um, yeah, I can't stress that enough. We, we're trying to raise awareness around narcissistic abuse. Um, I want to thank uh, David Demars. Thank you, David, from Demars Coaching in uh, Las Vegas. Guys, if you'd um, if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one session, counselling session with David, um, please just inbox him um, or and subscribe to his YouTube channel at Demars Coaching. Uh, he puts out I don't know three or four videos a week, don't you, David? That are just so so informative. You'll get so much oh, out of it. Please you. subscribe to my channel. Just look for Brighter Outlook Counseling Service. Um, I'm just starting to do uh, lots of videos in narcissistic abuse recovery. And yeah, as I was saying, if you'd like to have a one on set one session with David, just contact him uh, through Demar's coaching, or you can you can inbox here. Um, if you'd like to have a one on one session with me, just inbox me here. Uh, at Brighter Outlook and I would love no matter where you are in the world I have Skype I would love to be able to support you on your healing journey so um, with that said David thank you so much for staying up till 2 3 30 in the morning at once again um, I just look tired I'm not tired I just look like it I promise so <laughs> thank you thank you very much Nova and thank you all of you very much for allowing me to come back and answer your questions and share the stuff with you um, see you in a couple of weeks yeah. Absolutely. We, we, we can't wait to see you again. Back in two weeks, guys, David will be back here. Um, live streams on every Tuesday night um, with myself, but David joins and co-hosts the show every second Tuesday. So please join in every Tuesday night um, for the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery live stream Q&A. Okay, David, my, have my a one. I just want to say my supporters, please go to Brighter Outlook Counseling Service on Facebook, on YouTube, and support Nova, okay? She's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, I'll put the David. Link down below with my video. Thank you. Awesome. All right, David. Um, go and um, get some sleep <laughs> if you can. I'm usually I find it really hard to sleep after these things. I'm I get really excited. Um, just being able to to talk to everyone. Just yeah, some some coffee or a Red Bull or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well. Yeah. Um. Thank you very much, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. But I'll talk to you before then. Great. Bye, everybody. Thank you. 
Okay. Thanks, David. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, I uh, love having David here. Um, isn't he amazing? Just a wealth of knowledge. I learn something new every single time he joins us. But um, as I said before, I'm here every single Tuesday night um, to do the live stream narcissistic abuse recovery question and answer se session. So please tell your friends if you think they might be going through this. Um, I know a lot of you are hesitant to join in the live streams because you think, you know, someone will find out and they'll see you watching and, you know, they, that you, you aren't in that kind of uh, recovery stage yet. So it maybe get a pseudonym name to use in these live streams or watch it later. Um, you know, it will be on the timeline, but I just think it would be so helpful if you could join in live. So maybe a pseudonym name is, you know, if you're feeling that way is the way to go. Um, once again, guys, um, please share um, and please contact me if you, you, you can't do this alone, okay? You need support um, and you need someone who understands. As you know, I'm trying to talk to someone who doesn't get narcissistic abuse is like trying to, you know, um, uh, pin jello against the wall. It, it's just never, it, you, you're never going to heal from your trauma. So um, I would dearly love to be able to support you in your healing. That's, that's what I do every single day. I know many of you have been to see me in the past um, and I would love to, to see all of you if I could, but yeah, just, just inbox me here at Brighter Outlook. Okay, on that note, um, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday night. Um, and as usual, I will be putting out um, information, memes, articles, links, whatever I can get my hands on, on Brighter Outlook's um, Facebook page. So make sure you've liked it so that you get all that information um, every single day. I put it out there. Okay, everyone, thank you. I will see you all next Tuesday night. Have a wonderful rest of your evening or day if you're somewhere else other than Australia. And, um, and yeah, I will, I will see you soon. So on that note, as always, remember your worth and then add tax. Bye, everyone.